Hey everybody, I'm just putting the uh, finishing touches here on guitar number seven. The build is largely complete, but you know what they say, God is in the details and it's not over till the fat lady sings. So um, there's just a few things that the guitar still needs. Um, the thumb screw the glue on it let go so i'm going to use some fresher glue on that fix that uh intonation still hasn't been set on the number one or two strings and uh needs the whammy bar installed and still needs a battery and then it should be ready for a sound check and a sound demo and oh almost forgot um if you recall, I leveled these fret in, these frets, but I never did anything about the fret ends and they're ever so slightly rough. So I'm gonna hit them up with a little sandpaper, see if that helps the situation. And uh, yeah, so then uh, sound check, sound demo, and final thoughts. Stay tuned. This is the newer bottle of CA glue. Oh, it's trying to run. Guess I have enough on. Run back up there. Run down to that side and that side. Yeah, run right there. Let me see what I can do about that. A paper to the rescue, maybe. Where is that? Sort of. It's kind of working. There we go. That's a little better. And there's CA glue evenly distributed around it. It's in there tight. So now we watch that dry. All right, time to skip ahead a bit. Okay, next thing it needs taken care of is, if you remember, I leveled like 18 through 18th and above on these frets, but that left the edge is a little rough, so. 
Gonna hit them with some 320 wrapped around a Sharpie. And see what that does. Oh yeah, much better. Much better. Mucho better. -oh. Oh yeah, much better. Much better. That takes care of that. that. Makes that part feel bad. That makes the rest of it seem bad. Such an improvement makes the rest of it look bad. So just hit them all right quick. Ah, much better. Yeah, got a little bit of material off there. Okay, intonation is all set. This clip is kind of hard to move. Wonder what the deal is. Ah. 
that's what the deal is. The spring isn't adjusted. Or wait a sec. There we go. There it goes, the clip. The spring is adjusted. And there's the trim. Dive and climb. Okay, um, right, so this is on. Need something to push it on with. There we go. So we turn the battery on and it's alive. Ouch. Can you actually see that? Yeah, there you go. It's alive. Well, this solder connection right here broke, so I'm going to have to re-solder it. Okay, uh, sound check. Running a Quilter 45 microblock uh, pedal amp into a 10-inch Celestian cab. And uh, let's see, the EQ is off right now. And first thing I notice is that number one and six string on this thing are not as loud as the other four. And well, I'll let you hear it for yourself. So I guess you might say I'm not that impressed with the balance of the pickup as far as like evenness of volume for all the strings. That number one string is really quiet. And the bass is, doesn't have a, it's not very full. But, but that's just the pickup, you know, you could put a different pickup in it. This is like a, it's like a $20 quad rail, something like that. And uh, there are all kinds of manufacturers for these things. This one actually is just, it's just uh, two hot rails stuck on the same base plate, really. And that's... A little different from the type of quad rails that I usually end up with. So, I mean, for, for example, I believe this would be a more typical quad rail here. This just came in. This was the... It's 
slightly more expensive, but gets here faster. Pick up for, uh, for the fretless. Let me put it in three Ziploc baggies. It's crazy. And yeah, it looks like this is a more conventional. This is... Yeah, there you go. All kind of like... Yeah, it's like four single bobbins. Kind of an idea instead of... Uh, Instead of this thing, which is basically a pair of hot rails on, a, on the same base plate. So, this would probably sound better than this one. I wouldn't be surprised. Guess I'll have to do an upgrade to it or something, maybe. But, but anyway, um, yeah, so here's the basic sound of it. You can make it louder, you can make it softer, you can do all the normal things you can do with an EQ pedal. It's, it's an EQ pedal that's just right here. It's the only difference. Um, I suppose everybody wants to hear something on it, so hold on a sec. Uh, pick. See how bad I butcher this.
Okay, this is with uh, the EQ turned on. The power supply for uh, the pedal board is dead, so I can't really do any effects or anything. And, like I said, my pinky is still offline, so I can't really play any chords except for, like, two-note power chords and stuff. But And I don't really play any more to speak of, to tell you the truth, so... <laughs> through a few chords that I can do without a pinky, so you can hear some stuff. There you go, G, the real challenge. Uh, what else we got here? I can't do an E, I can't do an A minor. I can do an E flat, I mean an E minor. too much, you play it too fast.
Yeah, see, you can't even hear the treble string on this thing. I think it definitely needs a different pickup. Anyway. Enough fiddling around. Okay, I just uh, threw it on a scale, and it's tipping the scales at about four pounds, or uh, like 1.87 kilos. So it's not my lightest build. It's light compared to a traditional guitar, but it's definitely not my lightest build. I just did one at the low budget build came in at two pounds seven ounces something like that two and a half pounds so compared to that this one's a little little heftier so um let's see final thoughts now that everything's pretty much done here um first off i'm not impressed with this pickup um yeah, if you see, you know, this was the infamous lime green one, actually. Back, I don't know, gosh, it was perhaps almost a year ago now. I got on eBay and I decided quad rails, high output quad rails was like very cool. And, or I'd, I'd finally decided that that was like going to be the pickup that I used for builds. And so I jumped on eBay and, and bought up like all the ones I could find because there weren't very many people offering them. And this was one of them. And uh, it was like the last one that I used. Most of the ones were like that other pickup that I had earlier, that other quad rail I was showing you. And uh, in fact, all of them were, except for this one. So yeah, if you see like, you know, Lime green in uh, lime green last one left on eBay, and it looks like you know it's just a pair of hot rails slapped on the same plate. Then you might want to pass it by because this thing definitely, I guess, what it is is that is that uh, it um it must not have a whole lot of strength to the magnetic field out here at the ends and so it doesn't really pick up a whole lot or something i don't know i mean i like i i wish there was like you know a filter you could switch on your camera that would show you the magnetic field in 3d so but but anyway um let's see Anyway, so that's the pickup. I'm not really impressed by the pickup, but I can always swap in another one. Um, carbon fiber. Uh, it's cool, you know, so it's definite bling points. Um, if you're 
like, you know, playing out every night and have issues with having to use a truss rod because of extreme changes in temperature and humidity from playing out every night or something, then yeah, something that doesn't require a truss rod or adjustment of it, um, or, you know, doesn't require one but has one anyway, a lot of manufacturers do that. They'll put in, you know, so much carbon fiber stiffening rods in the thing that it doesn't really need a truss rod, but then they put it in anyway just to, just to make people sleep at night so that folks can sleep at night. And, uh, so yeah, other than that, it, that would be the only thing that would make it really a need as opposed to nice. So, I mean, that would make it, yeah, a need as opposed to nice, I suppose. And, but by and large, it's, it's mostly bling, really. And... And it's approximately twice the cost of a wood fretboard uh, neck. I mean, between the cost of the fret wire and the fingerboard and the carbon fiber tubing, you're at about twice the cost of like an eBay neck. So, and it's really, really hard to work. It's, it's like working mild steel. So, um, so it's a matter of whether the extra time and the extra money involved or extra work or extra money involved is, uh, is, you know, worth the bling or you're one of these people who actually, you know, really needs a, a climatic, a climactically stable guitar. So... So that's about it for carbon fiber, I'd have to say. For the vast majority of people, it's, it's more or less, it's bling, really. And, you know, it's, it's like most bling. It's like, you know, you pay more and you get something that looks cool. So enough on that topic. Um, Babinga. It's kind of the same case. I mean, it's like this blank is like $22, $23. And uh, you can get like, oh gosh, like six blanks for $4 in pine kind of a thing. So yeah, it's, it's definitely, definitely, expensive wood compared to other suitable woods yeah like i was saying you know spruce you can you can get spruce blanks body blanks same size as this basically for uh, it's three dollars and 48 cents for a piece of wood that will yield six blanks so you're paying what 50 cents a blank or something like that but anyway um, yeah, so Babinga, by and large, it's a lot like carbon fiber. It's basically, it's bling, it's more expensive, and it's hard work. And there you go. So, if it's worth it to you, then yeah, use Babinga. I mean, it's beautiful wood. Um, neither of these things tonally has, like, made a enough of a noticeable enough difference to make me go, oh, I have to build in carbon fiber, or oh, I have to build using Bobingo, or anything like this. It's, yeah. Except for the, except for the shitty pickup, pardon my French, um, it's more or less, it's just another X13 with low frets. Yeah, this was, this neck was actually used on the original carbon fiber single tube experimental fail that, uh, that that in the process of trying to get the thing to work it was leveled within almost an inch of its life so it could probably actually use new frets on it anyway but but yeah by and large it's it's 
the this material and this material don't make don't seem to make a big difference you know if i was if i was going to in fact already the the thing that i suspect that keeps this thing from sounding like, exactly like all the rest of them is this pickup so yeah i mean i could probably take that pickup that i was showing you earlier toss it in here and then it would sound just like just like the rest of them just all the ones that have you know like this bridge and the x13 designs so so i think that's yeah that's pretty much it for the final thoughts is is you know bubinga and carbon fiber yeah they're cool they're not really that necessary and 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 they're mm, yeah you know, they're they're bling more than anything it's not really something that's nice to have maybe the carbon fiber because you don't have to mess with the truss rod so i suppose that could fall in the nice category and that it might be something that you need if you play out and have those have issues with that so but that's it so and that's about all I've got to say about this build. Um, like I was saying with this thing, I'm not really pleased with uh, the imperfections. Usually I'm like, you know, oh, it's relict or oh, it's, you know, makes it look handcrafted or whatever. But yeah, that right there, if that had been picture perfect, that would have been nicer. Uh, I'm not talking about the size. I'm just talking about the fact that you can... You can tell that the edge was hand cut and, and things like that. So and the edges are not perfectly, perfectly straight. It doesn't look like it was done on laser CNC, which in today's modern manufacturing world, one kind of expects. So yeah, we all kind of expect machine perfection in, in everything we purchase these days. So or see or use or whatever so you know i don't expect this i expect this thing to be perfectly square and, and stuff like that i don't expect there to be it you know the box isn't going to be skewed or, or or not square or anything like that so so that's a that's a little bit of a disappointment i don't think it's going to make me buy a uh, a laser cnc machine though might make me stop doing laminate stuff <laughs> you know so but anyway okay i'm gonna shut up and get out of here and uh i guess i have to finish filming guitar eight since i already started it and i guess i have to finish filming the flying v because I already started it, and the parts came in, and <clears throat> I think that's it. I showed off the parts for the fretless, but I haven't started filming the build, which means I can just document the build when it's done, and only have to shoot a few minutes worth of video for that. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, guess there's not a whole lot of videos coming up. So, whenever the next thing, whatever it is, comes up, I guess I see. Guess I'll see folks then. So, until then, everybody, go make some sawdust and have a good one. Oh, look, it's possible. Say hi, possum. Where'd possum go? There he is. I see a tail. Can I see him through the camera? Where's possum? There's possum right next to the trail. Yeah, there's possum. That's possum right there. Yeah, so. Okay, yeah. In with critters. There's possum. And there's the kittens. Everybody, have a good one. <laughs>